I was hoping you'd tell us a little bit about what you're up to. I want to tell you about something that's really developed over the past few months that's enormously exciting. And it has, so right now, we think there are about 22,000 different genes in the human body. And we have very good data now that about 500 of them can be involved in autism. So the question then is, how do you find, out of the 22,000, how do you find the 500 that, that might be involved in autism? And there's a new method where we can actually look at every gene in the human body at once. It's called whole exome sequencing. And it allows us to actually test every gene in the human body at one time and look for genes that are mutated in individuals with, on the spectrum. Now, the problem with this is, um, well, there are two problems. One is it's still a little bit expensive. But the other one is that you really need many, many hundreds of participants, even thousands of families. And so what we've done is we've put together a group of 20 laboratories, all of whom who work with their local families. And we're doing this new method on upwards of 20,000 samples. And we actually have pretty good data now that we can actually find 100 new autism genes in just two or three years with this new method, with the group of people we put together. So in all the kind of history of autism research, we think we know about 100 genes. And we're now in a position to double that number in about 18 months and get to a point where we can actually develop new drugs for autism. So I think, you know, the other thing we work on a lot in the laboratory is functional studies. So when we find a gene in autism, we study it in model systems, either cells or animals. And once we know what the gene does, we're able to actually develop new therape therapies. We now have a clinical trial going on right now at the Autism Center that's trying a drug for kids with a mutation in Shank 3. And these kids, they have a pretty hard time. So they, uh, they're what we call low functioning. Right? They've got intellectual disability, they don't speak, um, they have a lot of anxiety, they have a lot of problems, with, obviously, with communication, and they really need our help. And so we have found from studying this gene in our animal models that a certain drug, which is already used for other disorders in patients, actually works very well in the animals. And we've just now started a clinical trial in these kids with this drug. And five kids have already been enrolled, and our target is to do 35 kids in the next eight to nine months and see if we can make some improvement in their lives. And so every time we find a gene for autism, we have the opportunity of doing this again. And so it allows us to supplement the behavioral things that we already do in the field so well with pharmacological treatments for those kids most at need. You speak of mutation. Can you explain that to me a little more? Why does this uh, gene mutate? The why is a little bit of a question, and we don't always know. But we do know, for example, that some of the things that we observe uh, in the population, for example, that older dads are more at risk of having kids with autism, uh, we actually know now that's caused by mutation. So as we get older, as we men get older, our sperm, the, when we make sperm, they're more likely to have a mutation in them. So the genes over time, you know, cosmic radiation, environmental factors, who knows? But just like over time, you're more likely to get a cancer because of mutation, somatic mutation. Right? So the more we live on this planet, the more we accrete small genetic changes. And if they're in the sperm, they will be transmitted onto our children. Many mutations are neutral. Maybe some of them are even beneficial. But if they hit a key gene, they will have an impact on the child. So we're learning now that a lot of autism is what we're calling recent mutation, things that happened just in the dad's sperm or just in the very recent generations, because there's a lot of selection against mutations. right? All of evolution is a way of selecting against mutations. Mm -hmm. Do you think uh, environmental things are affecting? So there's no question that some of the genetic findings we see are due to environmental causes. So there are three beautiful papers that just came out that show, as I said, that as dad's older, there's more, pr more prone to have mutations mm -hmm. and autism. And those mutations are called by, caused by something in the environment, but, they, but it's then transmitted genetically. So the mutation, the environmental something, and it could be just cosmic radiation, it could be, you know, it may not be an environmental toxin, right, but it could be something in the environment that increases the risk for mutation, and then that's transmitted down to the child. Right? So I don't think we have a good answer. I mean, there's been a lot of interest in things that are environmental that don't act through genetics. For example, 
you know, what if the mother was taking an SSRI during pregnancy, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Yeah. Does that increase risk for autism? Right now, the jury is still out on many of those things, and uh, the studies that have been done are very provocative, but they've been done on, on samples that are w weren't collected to ask that question. Mm -hmm. So they're just right now an hypothesis that has to be tested in other data sets. Mm -hmm. um, so the question still remains, if there is something, if we can really point to a, an environmental compound that increases the risk for autism. And right now, the answer is probably not, we can't, but we may be able to soon. There's another study that's going on now in Mount Sinai, which is um, also trying to bring together many different sites. And this is a study that was developed by Avi Reichenberg, and it began as something called eye care. Mm -hmm. And eye care basically put together six national registries. So countries with socialized medicine, and I know that's uh, not popular in these parts, but they're able, actually able to track everybody from the day they're born through their entire lives, mm -hmm. and it becomes very easy to identify everybody with autism and ask about their environmental exposures in a way we can't do in the United States. Mm -hmm. So in his case, if he wants to ask the question, for example, about whether SSRIs during pregnancy increase for risk for autism, he just Tell can... Tell me, what's SSRIs? SSRIs are se selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. They're things like Prozac. Oh. They're things that people give, take for depression. Mm -hmm. So if he wants to ask the question about those kind of compounds in autism, he can just get... A, well, it takes about six months of programming, but he can actually survey every person in those countries and ask who took SSRIs in pregnancy, and then look going forward, do they have increased risk for autism? So suddenly the, he's able to ask the question in a very strong scientific way. And he gets very different results than what we hear about from people doing it with like the California registry, which is not really made for this. You know, one of the things that I meet is parents in a great state of guilt. Mm -hmm. and. I see that this kind of information will be distressing mm -hmm. to them. How would you suggest that I help them? In my view, and the evidence supports it, the overwhelming causes of autism are new mutations which you and I, nobody can control. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's not their fault. It's not their fault. And secondly, you know, everything we do comes with risk, mm -hmm. right? And we, we can never, you know, I mean, I, the parents did everything they could. They did everything just right. But sometimes things, you know, take a turn. And we just have to, that's part of, unfortunately, part of life. And uh, autism, as you well know, is part of human existence and probably yes, always is. has been. Um, and our job is, you know, not to feel bad about it, but to try and help anybody who has a disabling condition who needs help, right? Mm -hmm. No matter what the cause. The cause is almost, I think the cause is completely immaterial. I'm interested in the cause because it helps me find better treatments. But beyond that, the cause is not that important, is it? No, no. We are who we are. We are who we are, that's right. Yes. Well, thank you. Thank you.